Yeah, um, uh, thank you, Andrew, for the question. Um, so there are a lot of uh, opportunities um, that are um, good enough uh, for the, the youth, uh, and especially when they want to make a, a return within the, within the short term. We know that economic times are, are challenging, so um, I, I mean, at the end of the day, someone has to balance. Uh, are you investing? Are you, uh, uh, are you spending money in terms of your, in terms of your upkeep? So, uh, for instance, uh, within uh, the Kenyan space, we have uh, money market funds, um, and these are low-risk uh, and ideally short-term uh, kind of investments uh, with around 29 uh, uh, registered uh, providers, uh, unit trusts or collective investment schemes. So, for instance, at uh, CIC uh, Asset Management, uh, we, are the, uh, we have the largest uh, unit trust uh, portfolio uh, within, within Kenya, uh, and we've seen uh, a lot of Kenyans actually learn more about uh, money market funds uh, with around 1.1 uh, million Kenyans having invested in uh, Unitrust as a whole uh, as at March uh, of 2024. So for instance, at CIC, uh, we'll offer you a return of 13.7%. Uh, uh, um, and this is uh, income that you're actually earning um, on a daily basis. But and then we compound that interest uh, and whatever you've earned on a on a on a monthly basis, and also the ease of investing in this in, in this kind of uh, product um, is, is usually quite easy. Um, I think with the advent of technology, um, there is an application, for instance, uh, on the Play Store or on the iOS Store. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the CIC Asset uh, application, uh, as well as uh, online. Or um, uh, someone can also reach out uh, to us via email um, if they prefer. Um, I don't call it old school, but uh, filling in forms and so on and so forth so that we can, uh, so that someone actually starts this journey of uh, investing. So 13.7% is a, is, a, is a good return for, mm. the, for, the, for the kind of low risk that you're actually uh, taking. Okay, and you'll be telling us about that and how much somebody needs to dig in to know exactly how much money I can invest yeah. for long term and how much money I can invest for long term. Sure. We are also keeping tabs with what is happening in Nyanza where the head of state has been on a working tour. I think it's a four day working tour. And uh, today in the morning he did launch a water project at Oyugis. And uh, moments ago, and let's hear what the head of state had to say. As a head of state uh, earlier on in uh, Homer Bay County, and to be specific, he was in Oyugis where he launched a water project. They are emphasizing on the need for us to remain united as a country and for development. And later on today, he will be having a town hall, um, town hall uh, engagement with the residents of Kisumu, and we'll be bringing you that live as well. But um, just in case you joined us, this is Biz Check. We are looking at investment opportunities in the country, and we'll be uh, delving a little bit deeper on the money market funds. What exactly are they, and how exactly do they work? I have three, three experts in their field here to help us drive that agenda. Remember, we're also live on our social media spaces, so feel free to also dig in at that. We'll be bringing you a comprehensive report on the president uh, four-day tour of Nyanza in our subsequent bulletin, but now let's go back to our um, uh, live and candid discussion. Uh, um, Caesar, how has Kenya addressed some of the challenges associated in, uh, in, in doing business? And we've had sometimes people complain about uh, punitive taxes. We've had sometimes people talk about uh, uh, regulatory challenges as well? Uh, tax is always a contentious issue, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, people have to pay tax anyway. Uh, how the, how uh, Kenya has assisted uh, in uh, growing investments, I can uh, link it to public uh, private partic participation mm -hmm. where uh, the, the government is trying to create an enabling environment uh, in the manner in which uh, it uh, uh, presents uh, its uh, uh, taxation policies, but as well as uh, on the other side, uh, when you look at uh, the private uh, participants and also the uh, NGO uh, perspectives, where they come in to uh, assist, to aid uh, different forms of trade, uh, and also create uh, business incubation uh, centers mm -hmm. to nurture young talents 
to nurture the youth mm -hmm. in terms of uh, matters entrepreneurship. There are a number of uh, centers when you think of uh, Chandaria Business Center. Mm -hmm. There is a program uh, or rather a circle at the Strathmore University, mm -hmm. the iCube, where young people come together to be mentored on how to uh, manage or even package their business ideas mm -hmm. uh, which have the potential of uh, scaling uh, in, a, in, a, in a bigger perspective, not only in Kenya, but uh, in the continent at large. Mm. Yeah. Eric, I'm looking at the Money Market Fund. In simpler terms, what exactly is it and how does it differ from, uh, um, from uh, things like even bonds? Uh, and how can you make money from it? Okay, so uh, a Money Market Fund is uh, a collective investment scheme. So a Money Market Fund by its definition, it means it's for investors who are interested in investing in short-term instruments. Uh, so the underlying investments in the money market funds normally would be uh, treasury bills, treasury bonds, uh, bank deposits, uh, largely short-term investments that earn you interest. Uh, and the interest, as uh, Dennis has mentioned, is interest that you would be accruing every day and earning something small every day. Mm -hmm. So uh, this would be maybe a replacement for money you have in the bank uh, that you're not immediately using. Uh, and you know, if you're not using money now in money market funds, uh, you can come in and go um, fairly quickly. Uh, Britain Money Market Fund, for example, uh, if you are to invest today mm -hmm. uh, or request for your money today morning, then in a day you'll probably have your money back in your account and the operations of the money market funds are very simple uh, any actions you're doing like i mentioned can be done through the phone digital they're very efficient uh britain will have a ussd code so if you do star 778 hash then you can follow the prompts and do whatever you're doing very efficiently uh, we've also gone ai uh, and we have um, we're trying to embrace new technology and what's happening and we have a chatbot uh, so if you dial Zero seven zero five one hundred one hundred. Just go to WhatsApp and say hi. Mm. And there's someone called Bella on the other side who uh, will well, engage. How much are we talking about? Because we're talking about this, the, the turnaround time in terms of if you want your money back to be a, even a day. And that's a, that's an investment a lot of Kenyans would be would be very very much interested in. How much are we talking about, for example? In terms of minim example? minimum investments, you can start with as little as a hundred shillings. Really? Yes. Uh, 100 shillings, you can do it now, you can do it anywhere. Um, it, it's meant to be efficient. Mm -hmm. It's meant to be reachable to everyone from uh, the student in campus to the very wealthy person who has a lot of money and you know, they just want somewhere where it can be earning interest. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for the young people, uh, it's important to, to get that savings culture uh, and for us to start early. Because if you think about it, uh, you start work when you're maybe 24. Uh, you work until you're 24. You work until you're 60. So mm -hmm. that's 36 years. And then you have God blesses you with another 36 years, which you need to live on what you've been working on on that short period of time. So uh, the culture of savings, that's why we need to allow even the smallest investor to be able to start, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to start that journey of saving, that journey of investing, uh, to be able to grow their wealth and also secure their financial future. Um, Dennis, I'm looking at the money market and what are some of the key benefits of investing in eight of our other investment options which are there, including bonds? Yeah, um, I think the uh, um, reason why perhaps um, we, we are talking maybe a lot about money market funds is, mm -hmm. is because of the ease of access uh, of actually uh, investing into money market funds. Um, and so with the different uh, money market funds, you'll have uh, different uh, minimum investment uh, sizes. Um, but generally, they are, they are, they are very low, uh, they're very affordable. And um, so other than the, the ease of actually be, uh, being able to invest and access, and it's not that uh, uh, complicated, there's also the liquidity aspect. Um, as as, uh, as uh, um, Eric has mentioned, um, for instance, you could be able to get monies, uh, uh, your, your funds back uh, within uh, a day. Um, so, so basically, in terms of planning, your, uh, planning your your goals and your and, and, and in, in case even an emergency were to arise, you are actually able to 
uh, to, to get value from this, uh, from this investment. Um, another, another critical uh, aspect, I think, about uh, money market funds, uh, and now which, which, which again now ties into all, to all the rest, is that the rate of return at which you're getting uh, is, uh, significantly, is significantly higher than what you'd get, for instance, if your money was just in your, in your bank account. More or less like a fixed deposit. Yes. Uh -huh. um, but, but you see, even with a fixed deposit, it's mm. like a contract because yes. you fix that money with a bank for one month, two months, three months. For, the, uh, for, for money market funds, it depends on when you actually need, uh, need the funds. Yeah, uh, because when, when you look at the statistics, for instance, from the Central Bank of Kenya, um, I think there were around 6.4 trillion uh, Kenya shillings in deposits as at the end of last year. Uh, and when you look at, uh, for instance, the, the amount of money in money, in money market funds, uh, I, uh, it's around 230 billion uh, Kenya shillings. Whilst we, when, when you invest within money market funds, you actually earn a higher uh, rate of return than if those uh, funds were actually lying uh, within within your within your bank account. So, I think uh, rule of thumb, um, and, and I, I guess that's what we are trying to educate our viewers, is uh, first of all plan and budget how you are going to spend uh, whatever amounts of money that you have. Set down your goals. Put. Uh, put monies uh, in the money market funds as part of your uh, goal setting process, be it you want to uh, buy furniture, be it uh, you want to go on a trip, be it uh, you want to pay uh, school fees for, for your child at one point of time. Um, money market funds will act as that tool and that vehicle that will actually get there safely. Remember, these are low risk investments. So the possibilities of you losing your capital are, mm -hmm. are, uh, are, 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 are quite minimal. Now you mentioned bonds. Mm -hmm. uh, bonds are another avenue for actually uh, investing, but uh, they bring in a bit of compl uh, complexity and also uh, market, market forces. Uh, so you can buy a bond or invest in a bond at a, at a particular price and value, but when it comes to actually exit that particular asset, mm. the value could be lower or it could be higher. Mm. So you see there's an element of risk uh, in, that, in, uh, in, in, in government bonds. And in essence, government bonds are long-term long -term kind of uh, investments and where uh, the, the liquidity is not as high as what you'd see in money market funds. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, why is it that a lot of Kenyans are not quite embracing this? Because uh, the figures that you're talking about in a country of of uh, more than 50 million people and the risk that, um, that, that Dennis has mentioned is quite low but a lot of people are not embracing this, the money market fund, the bonds, they are not quite embracing. What could be the, what could be the challenge here? Uh, and what are some of the, 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 the risk involved in, in, this, in these ventures? Okay, um, I want to believe uh, young people don't have uh, adequate resources uh, in terms of uh, excess funds that are lying idle. Um, also, historically, there is the issue to do with uh, Ponzi schemes. I'm not discrediting uh, uh, these two gentlemen mm -hmm. over here yeah. who are presenting uh, the products which are very competitive currently in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Um, there has been this idea with Ponzi schemes where they promise unusually high returns with uh, very little uh, risk and uh, they are consistently marketing uh, returns regardless of the fluctuating uh, market uh, mm -hmm. uh, environment. Mm -hmm. uh, also, on the same regard, uh, there, there has been uh, an issue to do with unregistered uh, investments mm -hmm. or rather uh, unregistered investment uh, products which make people shy of, uh, I'd say that, but also I want to look at it from this perspective of uh, financial literacy. Uh, in as much as the ratings are high in our countries mm -hmm. or rather in Kenya, uh, but still, there is a large population of uh, young people who do not have access to that information, to the, to the right information. And if that uh, information is uh, accessible to, to that particular group of uh, people, the issue would be, is the information uh, provided in a manner that is easily understandable to them? Mm -hmm. 
those are the, some of my. Uh, Brian insights. has a has a, um, um, Andrew has a very very interesting point because the last let's say two months we have seen issues of people depositing money and that money just disappears we had an issue in Eldoret we have a new one here in Nairobi and those are just the ones that have have made their way to the media yeah. what's some of the risk involved in uh, money markets and uh, what should you consider if you want to venture anyone who is watching it would want to venture into MMS I think um, not only money markets but also general investments yes uh, you need to do your homework uh, in terms of because there's no magic to, to return or profit. Uh, in most cases, be it a business that you have, uh, be it the schemes that uh, Andrew is mentioning, uh, someone comes and tells you, you know, we, you give us this amount of money, and we'll give you these times back. Then the question is, how are they, how are they doing it? Uh, because, like I'm saying, there's, there's no magic in, in business. There's no magic in investing. Uh, most of these things, once you check behind the curtain, mm -hmm. you can see the mechanics of how everything works and how the return is uh, generated, mm -hmm. which is the same thing with uh, money market funds. Uh, in my view, um, money market funds, or rather all money market funds, should be uh, are regulated by the Capital Markets Authority, and they have a governance framework where you have the fund manager who is the one who uh, decides where the money is being put, uh, guided, of course, by the framework given by the CMA, who's also monitoring. Uh, then you have a trustee who is an oversight body, normally they're banks. Uh, then you have a custodian who actually holds the assets of the fund. So in most cases, um, uh, money market funds um, should be uh, secure because of that governance framework. Uh, I know, you know, sometimes you may have seen challenges where uh, even uh, investments have gone bad, uh, but the first step is that, is the, is the investment, how is you going to, uh, is, it, uh, is it registered, is it regulated, uh, have they had any issues? Uh, and of course there's a case for uh, companies that have been there for a long time, uh, because there's a track record of uh, of security for clients, uh, the, you can tell uh, some of these companies, we found them there and we leave them there. So uh, I think that those are the, the main things you should just look out for as you go into any investments, not just uh, money market funds. Mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, Dennis, what, what I've heard from, um, from uh, Eric here is that uh, th th a lot of people would want to share air from that, but so what are some of the tax implications of investing in uh, money market funds because sometimes you find people um, shy away from investing some in something because of the tax implications that come around, uh, come come along with the with the investment plan yeah uh, thank you yeah um, so in terms of uh, tax uh, implications um, I know uh, generally um, it's, it's 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 widely accepted um, that uh, taxes have to be paid um, so but, but the government, um, I, I think th uh, through the regulator, the Capital Markets Authority, um, in a bid to actually encourage uh, uh, investors to actually save, uh, and, and more so uh, the, 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 the youth, uh, to actually be able to start uh, their investment journey. Um, so from a, from a tax uh, perspective, um, uh, taxes uh, f uh, for, for money market funds um, uh, are generally uh, not there, because, so that to encourage uh, investors to actually uh, be able to invest in this uh, in this particular uh, in this particular products, um, and even when you look further further afield, when you look at other kinds of uh, investments, uh, for instance, if you are to go and get um, uh, sorry, if you are going to, to actually invest, for instance, in a bank deposit, the income will be will be taxed, uh, and there's that withholding tax uh, of 15 uh, percent, uh, same as uh, with government uh, bonds. Um, however, there's a specific, uh, there's a subset of government bonds called infrastructure bonds uh, that don't attract uh, any kind uh, of, 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 ta of taxation. Um, so ideally, uh, the ecosystem has been developed so that it encourages uh, a lot of people to actually uh, save uh, as well as uh, invest um, in whatever goals that they are trying to achieve or even uh, if, if, even if it's for retirement um, and so on and so forth. Mm. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, Andrew, I'm looking at institutions or organizations who are also investing in um, the various money market funds that we have in the country. Why is audit and forensics very important to such institutions? That's a very good question. Uh, but uh, before, before I uh, delve into that, mm -hmm. I want to weigh in on uh, what my brother Eric here has said. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to reaffirm the position of uh, due diligence uh, whenever you're taking mm -hmm. or thinking of uh, going into any investment. Because when you uh, go through uh, the company's uh, background or uh, even uh, doing uh, elaborate uh, research, on the leadership structure of that organization, mm -hmm. you should get uh, some sense of uh, confidence in uh, some of the products that they offer. Because uh, what happens is uh, with enhanced uh, corporate governance structures, you'll enjoy um, strong leadership mm -hmm. and also uh, great uh, aspects of accountability. And these are essentially to help and uh, guide uh, ethical uh, practices in the, in the, in the industry. Mm -hmm. uh, on to the next question where you've asked about uh, the place for audits and uh, forensics. Mm -hmm. Well, financial audits also provide uh, uh, investors with confidence in that the financial audits uh, are essentially to verify financial statements and records to ensure that uh, they indeed reflect the correct or the accurate position of the company. Uh, for the forensics part of it, forensics are more elaborate than the standard uh, financial audits in that the focus is on uh, fraud. Mm -hmm. the, the fraud risk mm -hmm. uh, that we are trying to minimize mm -hmm. to an acceptably low uh, uh, rating because I believe you cannot totally prevent fraud because of that human uh, uh, limitations uh, mm -hmm. or interactions in, in, this, uh, in these systems. Mm -hmm. So uh, in matters forensics with the elaborate uh, or rather stretched uh, scope where we investigate uh, uh, fraud uh, relating to misappropriation of assets or even embezzlement. Mm -hmm. So I think this is the general infrastructure mm -hmm. for, for financial audits and uh, forensics. Mm. Um, Eric, I'm looking at um, how to uh, assess the, um, the risk and return for, for anything you're investing in, including the money market fund. Are there any tools to help you calculate that? You come from different institutions. Maybe you have rates for such kind of investment, and then the other company has a different metric to, to, to maybe try to assess the kind of risk that you're getting into. Okay, yeah, so um, when you're going into investments and you're trying to assess risk and return and whether uh, whatever you're investing in matches or is aligned with your risk profile. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first things you probably look at is how long do you intend on investing? Uh, because um, there's a risk with longer investments. Because so many things could go bad in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, shorter is perceived as less risky. Mm -hmm. uh, then also you need to, if you're investing in um, interest earning securities, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the government bonds, uh, the bank deposits, it is generally viewed mm -hmm. uh, that the government is uh, risk-free. Um, when you're investing in um, Kenyan, gov Ke Kenyan government uh, securities uh, in Kenya shilling, it's mm -hmm. viewed that the government will pay you. So when you start from the government, then as you invest in other uh, companies, are you investing in banks? Mm -hmm. uh, are you buying corporate bonds? Mm -hmm then you're building risk from there, where you start with the government is risk-free. So everything else you add a bit on top. Uh, so with this, you're reviewing various things about the company. Uh, you're reviewing its financials, historical performance, which, you know, there's a lot to review, which is why we're actually encouraging people to invest in money market funds, uh, because 
uh, not everyone will go and look at the financials of multiple companies uh, just to see whether when they give them money they'll get paid back. Mm -hmm. uh, not everyone will be monitoring these things every day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but this being something that we're doing and monitoring on every on on a daily basis, then we are able to assess the risk, assess the risk for uh, for the investors, mm -hmm. and just to ensure that. Uh, when you invest in a money market fund, uh, when you invest in a unit trust fund, you actually are investing in a low risk uh, investment vehicle. Mm. Mm. All right, and uh, of course, there's another function uh, mostly tied up. Uh, we do apologize for that technical hitch in regards to that feed, but we will be getting back to that. That is women empowerment, uh, where the PCEA, Women Financial and Social Inclusion um, training is currently underway and in attendance also is uh, Anderito, who is a registrar of political parties in the country. But the lady who was addressing that congregation was uh, Dr. Jennifer Riria, who is the president and CEO of that institution. We'll be getting back to that as uh, soon as we have a good feed in regards to that. What would you call, what advise people who would like to consider investing into money market funds, unit trusts, uh, government bonds as well? What are some of the pointers that they should, or the boxes that they should tick? All right. Um, so I'll start with the, for instance, with, the, with, with money market funds. <laughs> I think, um, first of all, an investor uh, w would best uh, have to will actually first of all have to identify mm -hmm. uh, which uh, money market fund uh, provider or uh, money market that they actually want uh, to invest in uh, because um, as I mentioned earlier there are, there are quite a number uh, and as uh, Eric uh, mentioned um, there is uh, a, a bit of uh, safety uh, in terms of uh, going with a provider who has been there for, for a while and who, who has a, a, a track record. Um, in as much as, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, an old institution can, can still fail, uh, it gives someone a, a bit of confidence that they can, be, uh, they, they can actually be able to, uh, to invest their money safely uh, without any, any kind of uh, issue or challenge. Um, another thing would also be, be to look at um, the kind of uh, values or the philosophies uh, of the institutions that are actually uh, managing these particular funds um, uh, because, uh, again, it, it, it um, dictates a bit of uh, the style of investing in as much as the assets uh, are the same, um, uh, more or less, uh, given that uh, money market funds ideally are supposed to invest in short-term uh, securities, uh, for instance, your treasury bills, your fixed deposits, uh, call deposits, uh, and a bit of uh, commercial paper uh, mm -hmm. if it's available and the issuer is uh, of, of, of high quality. Um, and then th the other thing would also be, for instance, the ease of access uh, of your funds. Um, uh, I know we've talked about um, the advent of technology and how e easy it is uh, through applications, uh, through uh, web platforms to actually be able to access uh, your funds uh, because now this ties into your, to, your, uh, to how uh, the money market fund provider actually services uh, you as the client. Um, and then again, the, there would be also the, 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 the client service that you actually do receive uh, from, from, from your chosen money market fund. For instance, do you receive regular updates? Mm -hmm. um, for instance, a monthly fact sheet that mm -hmm. basically just shows you mm. uh, the composition of that ma money market fund okay. as well as uh, uh, the, the kind of return. All right. Um, right. Yes. I uh, ho kindly hold the thought. If we get back to Kikuyu, where we are talking about financial women, financial literacy, what is happening there, and will bring us uh, more detailed coverage in regards to that. But let's come back to my interview here. We also we have Andrew Caesar, investment and audit expert from. Uh, Brian from Forensic. We also have Eric Karanja, who is the asset manager, Britam Assets, and Dennis Maranga, who is the portfolio manager at CIC Asset Management. We are looking at uh, more or less like the fintech. Uh, that is how uh, fintech, how fintech now is playing into transforming the Kenyan financial market. We've looked at money market fund and also bonds that are some of the options that Kenyans have in terms of investing. Uh, coming to you, Andrew, what role is fintech playing in the in the transforming the Kenya financial market and are there any specific innovations that we should be looking out for? Uh, thank you very much once again. Fintech uh, I believe is under the digital economy and uh, there has been a lot going on in this space 
uh, when you talk of um, payment processing solutions via digital uh, systems and platforms, that has been a game changer. I think we can all agree on that. So in my opinion, I believe there's so much that is going out there. Yeah. Um, we are, what about foreign investment? Whatever you're talking about is not only Kenyans who can invest in this, in your companies, right? What is bringing in investors? Is it the, 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 the economy is robust? And what could be driving them away? This is, I think this is a two-way traffic. Okay, um, we have foreign investors in your in yeah. your various investment products. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think for foreign investors, most of the foreign investors are actually invest locally in the in the unit trust funds, in the money market funds, uh, are largely diaspora uh, investors who are uh, Kenyans abroad uh, who have uh, who are either sending money home mm -hmm. or they want to come back in some time in future and they want to make sure by the time they come back. Uh, they have secured uh, their financial future and they, they, their monies are, earning, are, are working for them. Uh, but also, uh, Kenya as a country and as an investment destination, uh, there's been a lot of optimism uh, around uh, the plans uh, that the country has had uh, in terms of trying to get to the vision 2010, 2030 status of being a, a, a much more developed economy. Mm -hmm. And that has brought a lot of investments, uh, not only within uh, the unit trust funds and the money market funds, uh, but in the country and around inf infrastructure uh, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, around the risks uh, for foreign investors coming in, um, number one risk, which is any foreign investor will tell you, is uh, currency. Uh, if an investor in uh, dollars uh, comes in mm -hmm. uh, and the shilling moves to 160 like it was earlier in the year yeah. and the break came in at around 120 then that's already a loss even before they start earning any money mm -hmm. uh, with the investments they've done here uh, so the currency movements have been um, a major issue here uh, which can be a hindrance to getting uh, foreign investments but in moments when we've had uh, a stable currency, uh, or rather where the depreciation is not uh, too drastic, or it's gradual, mm -hmm. and you can almost tell how much it will depreciate by then, uh, foreign interest at that time uh, is normally bigger just because there's that security uh, of you will not lose everything you have earned, mm -hmm. uh, be it in a money market fund, mm -hmm. uh, be it in uh, any sort of project that you've invested in. Uh, because the currency has depreciated. Mm. Yes. Uh, Dennis, uh, I'm looking at financial literacy and especially the state of financial literacy in Kenya. You hear somebody in the two schemes that we've had in the last one month, you hear somebody say, I've lost 10 million, I've lost 5 million, I've I even brought my church congregation, I brought in. What is the level of financial literacy in Kenya? And I'm saying this because you guys come from a very big companies who should be also um, uh, educating Kenyans on some of these investments as opposed to some that we are having that somebody gets a couple of millions and then disappears with that money? Yeah, um, uh, indeed, uh, it, uh, it, is, uh, it is sad to see uh, such, uh, such cases uh, where um, a lot of Kenyans are swindled from their hard-earned uh, cash investments. Um, so from a, from a training uh, perspective, uh, we do offer trainings uh, to uh, uh, a lot of our of our clients, and um, um, uh, you would know that, for instance, uh, CIC uh, is very tied in with uh, with the cooperative movement, and uh, through that we usually disseminate uh, a lot of uh, material in terms of uh, financial uh, literacy, as well as our our financial advisors and agents. Um, uh, there are over 1,000 agents uh, around Kenya. They actually also do that, so that when when they come to you, they they do uh, they do at least give you some. Uh, information or training uh, regarding the investment space uh, within uh, within Kenya, and and from there try to look at what investment opportunity actually fits uh, your your particular your particular needs. Um, and then I, I, I would believe that the owners uh, should also be 
uh, with Kenyans uh, to a degree, uh, given that uh, the age of information that we are currently in, uh, where a lot of this information is, uh, is widely and easily available uh, through various platforms, uh, be it uh, you go to YouTube and uh, you just search money market funds, uh, uh, you will get a lot of Kenyans actually talking about, uh, about that, um, as well as, uh, for instance, uh, through uh, our websites, um, such as our website, there's a whole trove of information uh, about it. Now, I think perhaps now the critical issue uh, to move us forward so that uh, money market funds, for instance, can become a, a byword that everyone uh, speaks about and knows, um, it's, 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 it's just to keep educating uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of people throughout all platforms, uh, be it on radio, be it on uh, television, like, like right now, be it in the newspapers, mm -hmm. um, so that one can actually be able to get into the right kind of uh, investments. And more so, the right kind of investments are regulated investments. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, for, the, for instance, for the case, uh, cases that you've uh, given examples on, those are not regulated uh, investments. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, um, I, I believe uh, as an individual, you should ask yourself, what kind of risk am I willing to take? More times than not, if the return is too good to be true, then that is the case. Uh, there's something, uh, uh, there's something amiss there. Mm. You'd rather uh, get a lower, although decent return, consistently over time with a regulated entity. Because, for instance, the Capital Markets uh, Authority uh, mandates uh, money market funds uh, and other unit trust providers to provide them with regular updates. Uh, and these reports are usually quite quite detailed. So you can see the level of oversight uh, in terms of uh, the government actually protecting investors who go through the regulated and, uh, and proper channels of investments. Mm. Andrew, why is it so important if I want to invest in the financial market to engage the services of experts, uh, accountants, auditors, uh, you know, uh, investment managers like, uh, like the three managers I have here? Uh, it's, it's important to seek a third party or an additional uh, uh, eyes from a third party or uh, an individual who will come in uh, to provide uh, another set of eyes to view the investment from a different perspective. Uh, this is essentially to ensure that uh, you, you, you get um, the right information uh, to avoid any pitfalls or red flags along the path. And uh, what I'd prescribe is uh, you need to consult from registered uh, financial advisors or even uh, finance professionals who are part of a professional body, which is uh, very reputable, whether it's uh, in the country or uh, one of those uh, global professional bodies. Mm. Yeah. And uh, how are policies of the central bank? Because all this has to be regulated by the central bank, right? Um, well, the unit trust funds and money market funds are, regu are regulated by the Capital Markets Authority mm -hmm. uh, with the central bank regulating banks. Mm. So in the investment space, uh, the regulatory body there is uh, the Capital Markets Authority. Mm -hmm. Uh, for unit trust and basically any any firm doing any sort of investment activities uh, for pensions it's the retirement benefits authority mm. and um, the regulator the capital markets authority has issued licenses to various companies that have met the minimum requirements to set up and run um, various unit trust funds mm. uh, and like uh, Dennis mentioned we were expected to provide uh, regular updates uh, to the regulator uh, on the status of the fund or where the funds are invested and on how uh, where you've invested how is it performing mm. which clients have come which clients have go so there's a lot of information that is provided to the regulator mm. uh, that should be able to you know normally the regulator would then be able to pick out if there are any issues uh, mm. uh, with the fund and if there are any risks that uh, come about. And does it also include um, interest rates, inflation, and also the economic growth? What, the, the information to the, the, the regulator? Well, not really, mm -hmm. uh, because the information to the regulator is information specific to 
the the unit trust fund mm. so uh, what rate have you been giving yes you will provide that uh, what assets have you invested in um, what is maturing how long uh, basically all the underlying details of the fund mm -hmm. uh, because things like inflation now uh, those are external factors uh, that's to do with the general economy which in most cases the, the regulator maybe has that information for for themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Dennis what are some of the, the the cap how is capital market performing and some some things like equities bonds and other securities performing in okay. the country at the, at the moment thank you yeah and um, does it affect other investments policies as well yes yeah um so the <coughs> the general economic environment does affect uh, all the investments that you actually uh, do uh, within within the for instance the Kenyan the Kenyan economy. Mm -hmm. So if we start for instance with the with the with the stock market, uh, the stock market uh, I mean the Kenyan uh, the Nairobi Securities Exchange um, is quite a, a vibrant uh, market. However, g uh, just because of uh, a lot of um, global uh, economic issues, which do filter in uh, to us, uh, for instance in, in terms of uh, uh, currency. Uh, depreciation and uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so it uh, it has had a bad run for the past uh, two years, where we saw um, some negative returns. Um, however, this year the return has been uh, broadly po uh, positive, um, with with a general return. So, for instance, if you had invested in the stock market as at 31st December of last year, and then when when you look at uh, the 28th of August, um, the return in general, when you look at the at the whole market, uh, is around 14 uh, 14 percent. Uh, which is uh, which is quite uh, which is quite decent. Um, when you look at uh, government bonds, um, so here, uh, so generally, the values of, of government bonds are usually uh, determined by the interest rate uh, environment, and uh, we've we've been uh, in a high interest rate environment for for a while um, until much recently, uh, the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank uh, uh, actually dropped um, the central bank rate. Um, and what this means is that, um, and the Monetary Policy Committee, by, by, by dropping that rate, they're signaling to the market that interest rates ought to, uh, to, come, uh, to, come, to come lower. So there are bonds that would give you a high, uh, a high interest rate, yes, but um, there, there, are now some, there are some mechanics in terms of buying those bonds and selling those bonds, the actual value uh, uh, that you actually do spend in actually buying those uh, particular bonds. Now, um, earlier on, you, you'd asked a question about um, um, the central bank uh, mm -hmm. and how uh, it now factors into all of this. And um, uh, Eric mentioned that the Central Bank of Kenya regulates banks uh, broadly. But you can see through its monetary policy function, it, 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 it sets a, a tone in terms of where interest rates are supposed to be. And now that cascades down to banks, for instance, in terms of the bank deposits that uh, we are getting, um, as well as uh, now uh, the interest rates that we, are, we can actually be able to get from bonds and which we will eventually give our, our, our clients or any, any, uh, any particular investor who's investing in, uh, in these markets. Mm. Yes. Um, Andrew, I'm looking at um, the, cap the capital markets. Uh, how are they, what are the key drivers of... Uh, of investment in equities, bonds, and also in securities? Uh, I think uh, Eric and Dennis <laughs> have uh, <laughs> it elaborately. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe Eric? Yeah. You can touch on that? Yes. Um, I think there are a lot of factors that affect the um, performance of equities and bonds. So if I was just to highlight on a high level things like equities, so we've saw equities perform really poorly in the last two years. I think 2023 and 2022 combined probably 50% down. And then we saw some positive thing happen, then they did well early in the year. Mm -hmm. And when you try to think about the factors that led to that, so one, there's, the, there's a macro issue uh, because companies invest in, in the economy. So if there are concerns about the economy itself, um, then investors will shy away from the companies that are investing and are investing and operating in the economy. So in moments like last year, there was a lot of concerns around will the euro bond get repaid? There's all this huge debt that the government is expected to pay. Mm -hmm. So a lot of investors, uh, especially foreign, foreign investors, then fled the market, leading to a downturn in equities. So that's just an example of how the macro environment will affect mm -hmm. equity performance. Mm -hmm. Then also there's now company-specific 
factors. So um, how well uh, is the industry performing? So if you're looking at banks, how well is the banking industry performing? How well is the specific bank that you're analyzing performing? Uh, and then valuations. So uh, when analyzing equities, we do valuations to find the true value of a stock based on the analysis. And then based on the true value, then you can determine whether is it underpriced, is it overpriced. Mm. So stock specific, but also the main factors are also the, the macro factors like I started with. So that's mm. generally it's a lot of things that affect um, market performance and stock performance. And on bonds, the same thing. So on bonds, um, there's issues to do with interest rates. So the valuation of bonds is affected by how interest rates are moving, whether they're moving up or down. Mm. Um, and rates also are affected by the same macro factors, the same factors about how the economy is doing, how much does the government need to borrow. So if the government is borrowing a lot, you will see rates go up because there's that demand for them borrowing more. So the more they borrow, the more expensive the borrowing gets. Mm. Uh, and th th that also like transmits to the economy and to other factors, to other sectors. Because as banks, as government borrows more and more expensively, and that means even you and I, when we go to the bank and we want to borrow, uh, then we borrow more expensively. And we find it harder to pay because we are paying mm -hmm. over 20% interest rates. Yeah. So it's, it's it, the, when you're analyzing stocks, uh, equities and bonds, then it's multiple factors uh, that you need to look at uh, all the time uh, in a constantly changing environment just to be able to determine what the, the right steps are, mm. which maybe brings to the question you asked earlier to Andrew, why do you choose a, a, an in, a professional to help guide you yeah. through this journey? Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of things to look at. Uh, as an individual, maybe you either don't have the skill or don't have the time to do a deep dive into what you may require to be able to make the right decisions. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and um, Andrew, I'm looking at also the, the Capital Markets Authority and the Central Bank being regulators. How would their policies affect investment into the finance, uh, into the financial market? And um, yes, how would they affect the, the, the financial market in terms of the policies that they have in place? Okay, from a regulator perspective, <laughs> I think uh, they they give confidence to the potential investors mm -hmm. that uh, there is an avenue for redress or even dispute resolution. An avenue in the sense that uh, when there is an issue, a potential investor can always run to, to, to some of these regulators to uh, communicate some of the challenges that, uh, that they are facing and uh, seek with, uh, and seek guidance on the uh, avenues for further, further avenues or options for redress. Mm. Yeah. And uh, diaspora is really, the diaspora is really helping out in the Kenyan financial market. Uh, what are some of the incentives that they should be given to invest more in the Kenya financial market as opposed to investing out there? Yes, uh, indeed, uh, uh, the, the Kenyan diaspora uh, has has uh, has played quite a, a big role within the, the Kenyan uh, financial uh, space. Uh, we've seen uh, data um, every every time the central bank uh, reports uh, that diaspora remittances are strong, mm -hmm. um, uh, and and basically that means that they have confidence in uh, in the in the Kenyan financial markets. Now, um, in terms of uh, incentives uh, regarding. Uh, what they can, how, how more they can be incentivized to invest in Kenya other than the return and um, perhaps uh, that, they are, that they are Kenyans and uh, hopefully one day they will return back uh, to Kenya. Um, it would be uh, the ease of actual uh, transmitting of, of funds uh, from wherever they are in the, in the diaspora uh, to, uh, to Kenya, to, to, to financial markets. And this has actually uh, been, uh, been eased quite uh, uh, quite uh, quite well over, over, over the past uh, couple of years. Um, I remember a uh, long time ago, perhaps in the 90s, um, when, when you're trying, when, when, when someone was actually trying to send funds uh, from abroad, 
um, uh, somewhat the, the, the general um, uh, avenues you'd go to would be perhaps uh, through money orders or poster yeah. uh, or through other money transfer uh, services, uh, which are usually uh, quite expensive. Um, but we, uh, in this day and age, uh, and uh, perhaps through the central bank and how it regulates that particular space, um, one can actually be able to transact and send monies um, within a, a very short uh, space of time, uh, within an hour or so, and it's received um, in a bank account elsewhere. Uh, look at uh, e-commerce uh, platforms, um, for instance, where you, uh, where you just uh, key in perhaps your debit card or credit card details or any other avenue, uh, you can be actually be able to, um, to buy things online, abroad, and then they, 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 they come to you. Um, other, uh, I mean, other, other incentives that, uh, I mean, that, that have actually uh, come through, uh, for instance, uh, linking linkages between, um, I think, M-Pesa with PayPal, mm -hmm. where, again, uh, monies can be able to be sent mm -hmm. uh, in, a, in, in an instant, and in into your time, M -Pesa, yes. in real time, actually, mm -hmm. into your uh, M-Pesa wallet, for instance. And this uh, has been through the efforts of, uh, of, of government, and more so the Central Bank of Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, regarding uh, financial, uh, how, how money is transmitted, the ease of transmitting money, uh, into Kenya and, uh, and out of Kenya. And that usually gives uh, confidence to a lot of uh, investors, be they uh, foreign investors or Kenyans uh, within, within the, the diaspora. So uh, I believe a, a, bit, uh, a bit more of this uh, would, 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 would uh, really encourage uh, a lot more uh, Kenyans within the diaspora uh, to actually invest uh, funds back home uh, within our financial market. Yeah, and because of the interest of time, Andrew, I'm looking at why should Kenyans be investing into the financial market, so to speak, and um, why should they use the experts like you guys as opposed to them venturing into that market? That's a very good question. Why they should use us is that uh, we are credible. Some of us are certified professionals, and uh, like I alluded to much earlier, is that uh, we are part of... Uh, professional body, whether it's uh, uh, within the country or a global professional body, mm -hmm. which is governed by a set of uh, a code of professional ethics, where you need to abi abide by uh, uh, some, all, not some, mm -hmm. all of these uh, ethical requirements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Eric? Yeah, um, just to add on to that, I think uh, when you come to the professionals, you get you get true value. Uh, when you join us at Britam, uh, Britam Asset Managers, uh, we give ease of access. Uh, we take all our time uh, trying to give you the best return, best risk-weighted return that we've discussed. Mm. Uh, the company has been around for 65 years. Uh, it's before probably anyone on this panel was born, mm. and it will be around hopefully long after we are gone. Mm -hmm. So you can be sure that um, there's a bit of solidity in that, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a bit of uh, confidence that you know, investors should be comfortable coming in, uh, knowing that a lot of time is uh, being, a lot of time and care uh, is being taken to mm -hmm. manage their funds and uh, make sure they, they, they are well taken care of. Dennis, why should the Kenyans invest in the financial market and why should they incorporate the services of experts like you, because we have seen millions of Kenyans have been, have been conned of their hard-earned money. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, so the financial services space um, is, is, is the lifeblood uh, of, the, of the Kenyan economy. And why it is important for Kenyans to actually invest in it, um, uh, it's, it's because you don't want to lose the, uh, you don't be a loser um, or miss out on the Kenyan uh, uh, investment story or investment growth. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of foreign investors coming to invest in Kenya uh, every single day uh, through uh, foreign domestic, uh, foreign, uh, through FDI uh, programs and so on and so forth. So there is something that also foreigners are seeing within Kenya. Now, investing within uh, the financial services space and investing, uh, for instance, through uh, CIC asset management, number one, we are regulated. So rest assured that your investments uh, are, are safe with us uh, at the end of the day. And then being uh, a financial services uh, 
uh, professional. Mm -hmm. uh, I am also uh, regulated in my own personal capacity through certain uh, uh, certifications, and it is my duty to do the best, uh, the best for you, and basically uh, to invest the, the funds or your, your, your funds as best as I can. So I put you ahead of any other uh, uh, interests that I may have uh, uh, or the company uh, might, actually, might, might actually have. Um, so, and, and lastly, why it's important to go through a, a, a professional uh, is because we are trained in this. We know where the, the gaps are or we know what particular risk to actually uh, look out for because, yes, this information is there, but the the devil is in the detail in, in a lot of uh, in a lot of uh, specialized uh, fields uh, not to say that this field is complex or, uh, or that you cannot be able to do it and understand it yourself but um, come to us we'll hold your hand uh, as you start your investment journey or as you continue uh, with your investment journey uh, we constantly keep assessing the level of risk within our investments mm -hmm. and we communicate the same to you quite regularly so that mm -hmm. you are also involved in your investment journey all right Last but not least, Andrew. Uh, I'm speaking to the potential investors mm -hmm. out there. Uh, there is need to dis uh, diversify uh, on your investments. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. But in the case that you do, make sure you watch over them keenly. We are talking of uh, you need to exercise caution in the sense that uh, not everything attractive is valuable. And lastly, we are talking of resilience and patience. Rome wasn't built in one day. So good things take time, and uh, you need to think long term. Thank you, thank you, Andrew Caesar. Well said, not everything is attractive that is valuable. valuable. That is Andrew Caesar, an investment audit expert and also the audit manager at Bryan Forensics. Just next to him, we have uh, Eric Karanja, who is the portfolio manager and asset manager at uh, Britam Assets, and Dennis Maranga, who is the portfolio manager at CIC Asset Management. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Biz Check. My name is Ben Troy Njue, and Brian Muraru has been our sign language interpreter for this live program. I'm now giving the baton to the Swahili desk. I can see Kasichana Masha is ready to update you the latest news and also on Kurunzi Machina.